Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, maybe even to some of you. So thank you very much for joining us all in this uh, webinar. So today's webinar is actually quite a special webinar because we are co-organizing this webinar together with Barrier Instruments. So I have the pleasure to sit next to Janina Hanna here next to me. Hi, Janina. Welcome. Hi, thanks. <laughs> um, so Janina is the sales manager of the compact line at the Barrier Instruments and uh, she will be giving a general introduction on STAT and also on the Steadicon and uh, their expert line at the Barrier Instruments. And my name is Remco Dijkstra, I'm a product manager super resolution at SVI and I'll be giving some more information on STAT deconvolution and optimal STAT image processing. So before giving the floor to Janina, I would like to give a general announcement on our webinar. That is that you can submit questions at any time during the webinar or also after the webinar. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put in any questions that you may have. Also, we would highly recommend to view the video at full screen and at HD uh, resolution so that you can fully appreciate all the images that will be shown during this webinar. So, yeah, I would like to give the floor to Janina. So Janina, very welcome uh, here at uh, the SVI office. And uh, yeah, I would like to give you the floor to you. Thanks a lot for the kind introduction and welcome also from my side. So just to start with a quick stat introduction, I would like to show you this poster. It's the official Nobel Prize poster from 2014. And there the Nobel Prize was awarded in chemistry to St Stefan Hill and some of his colleagues, basically. What you already see on this poster is um, how STAT actually works. So here you see STAT is basically just as a confocal microscope you have a laser beam that is scanned over the sample and additionally to this excitation laser you have in confocal microscopy you have a second laser beam, a so-called quenching laser beam or STAT laser which is redshifted and it has a donut shape. This laser will shut off all the molecules, all the fluorophores and um, thereby fluorescence is only coming from the central spot of the donut and thereby your spot size is much reduced and your resolution enhanced. So to have a look, ah, no, <laughs> of course first I would like to show you this picture so on the left you see a confocal, on the right there's the equivalent stat. This is actually a nucleus, um, that's a nuclear pore staining in two colors and it was acquired by one of our stat machines. So to give you a bit of more introduction of stat is um, like this. So here on the left you see a sketch of a microscope. There's the excitation laser in green, then the objective lens in blue, and light travels through the objective lens into your sample and is focused onto your sample. And from there fluorescence is emitted and will be detected on the detector. Um, and irrespective of how good your optics actually are, your point will always be diffraction limited. So even if you have a single point emitter, you will see a big blur in the microscope of around half the wavelength of light. So on this part, of the, on the optics part, there's no option to actually change or improve the resolution further. So what Stefan Hell now came up with when he invented stat microscopy was to use instead of the optics, actually the fluorophores to change your resolution. And how it's done is you use an excitation laser to excite your fluorophores and then you have integrated a second laser beam, the STAT laser beam. It is donut shaped and it will act on the excited state molecules. So if you shine light, the STAT light, onto the excited molecules, it will de-excite them or bring them back to the ground state by a process called stimulated emission. That is actually a feature which was found by Einstein already quite some time ago. And now Stefan's idea was to convert this light to a donut so that everything is switched off in the vicinity of the central spot. Only the central spot remains and your resolution is much enhanced. So what is um, how it looks like in the spectrum of the dye is as just as in confocal you would like to excite the dye in the excitation maximum and then detect the emission. And now additionally you have the redshifted la stat laser beam, like for example for this dye which is a barrier star red. It's a far red dye, we ex excite X640 and we deplete with the stat laser at 775 and we can detect in between. 
In this configuration, you can also add a second die, for example, a red die like Alexa 594 or the Star 580. Then you have a different excitation laser, in this case maybe the 560 or the 590, and you can also deplete them by the 775. So you got a two-color stat image with only one stat laser. And the beauty of stat is that you can freely tune your resolution. So if you don't want to have any resolution improvement, you just turn off the stat laser and you're imaging in confocal mode, like you see here on this beat sample. So these are 20 nanometer beats imaged without stat, so basically confocal. If you now turn on the stat laser only a little bit, you will already see the resolution improvement. And if you crank it up, crank it up all the way, you can see the 20 nanometer beats at around 22 nanometer size. So depending on what you actually need for your experiment, you can choose your resolution, you can choose the laser power, and thereby um, yeah, define freely your parameters and set the resolution needed. And the question always arises on how you actually make the hole in the middle of the donut smaller. And the, question, uh, the answer is, it's actually also diffraction limited, so it will not be smaller, but it will increase the steepness in the middle. To illustrate it a bit, I've drawn this. So if you look at the confocal, you see the effect of spot size and um, basically a cut in intensity, pro in an intensity, pr intensity profile uh, through the spot. So now if you add a little bit of stat light, you already see that everything that is basically below the red and the yellow curve is depleted, so the effect of spot size drops. And now if you increase even more the stat laser power, the maxima will increase, so um, around the center spot you will have a steeper um, slope and thereby your effective spot size will be even smaller. That means that your resolution is only dependent basically on the wavelengths, on your optics, plus now also on the stat laser power. And this is the resolution formula. So your resolution will be a lambda, which is the wavelength of light, divided by two times the numerical aperture of the objective lens. And then there is a, an extra factor for I, which is the stat laser power, and um, I sat, which is the saturation intensity of each fluorophore, which is a special feature of each fluorophore. So it basically tells you how effectively it's statted or brought back to the ground state by the stat laser. And now if you increase I, which is the stat laser power, then you will reduce a lot your resolution. So that was it for the stat part. Now we put everything that I just explained to you into one box, which is the Steticon. It's quite a small box, so you see it here. It just stands next to the microscope. Right. So there, um, there are the lasers and detectors inside. And here on top, we have the um, scanner, the faceplate, which converts the stat laser to a donut, and also our pinhole. You can attach the Steticon here to basically any microscope body that has a free camera port. So here it's attached to its size microscope body, to the top part, it's an upright one. But of course, if you want to, you can also attach it to inverted microscopes, then we would use the camera side port. So if you have an old microscope body standing around, that's no problem, we can directly attach the stat Steticon, and it works really nicely then as a confocal microscope and a stat microscope. So in this box, in the so-called supply unit, we have all our excitation lasers, which are the 640 and 560 for stat imaging, and the 488 and the 405 for reference confocal imaging. Additionally, we have a 775 stat laser inside to do stat. We can reach resolutions of about 30 nanometers in that system, depending on the optics of the microscope. Um, all our lasers, except for the 405, they are pulsed. So you can um, do pulsed imaging, pulsed excitation plus the pulsed stat, and also do gating, time gating afterwards. And the Steticon has really nicely um, and easy to use software, which will be shown in some minutes, so you will see how to actually acquire a stat image on the Steticon. Um, the Steticon also, which is a quite cool feature I like a lot, because it makes my life quite easy. For example, if I carry it to conferences, I don't have to align it if I unpack it. And that's because it's aligned by design. So what it means is, 
Usually, in a stat microscope, you have um, the excitation and the stat beams coupled into the objective lens separately. So you have the excitation lasers and the stat laser, which has a beam shaping device to convert the stat laser to a donut, donut shape. And both of these are coupled into here to the objective by two different beam splitters. And if they go a tiny bit out of alignment, in the worst case, your excitation and stat are not overlapping anymore. So in our microscope, in the Steticon, it's a bit different, because we send the stat and the excitation lasers all through the same optical fiber, and then after the fiber, they're not separated anymore. And then they travel through the same beam shaping device, and this will only actually affect the stat laser and leave the excitation lasers untouched. So the excitation lasers are still um, Gaussian-shaped laser beams, while the stat laser is shaped to a donut. And this makes it really stable. Yeah? There's no beam splitters, no mirrors that could go out of alignment. And it was actually um, the PhD work of one of our founders, Matthias, during his PhD in Stefan Hell's lab. And as I said, you can put the Steticon on any microscope body, so upright like the Olympus, or here the Leica, or inverted like the one in the middle. It works really nice. Or if you want to, of course, you can also put it into your living room. Maybe it's a bit difficult if you play the piano while you're using the Steticon because of vibrations, but you'll figure that out. Then additionally to the Steticon, we also have the expert line. The expert line is a bigger system, so it comes on a big optical table, it already has its microscope body, and it's completely customizable. So you can add any excitation lasers, any detectors, um, you can do 2D and 3D stat and film imaging and whatever you can think of is optically possible, you can integrate there. It has multiple stat options, so you can have multiple stat laser beams and it has an extremely powerful software. And additionally, we will soon launch a new product line. That's a little teaser. And if you want to meet us at the FOM, we'll have our new microscope there. Now, to end the Steadicon part, I'll show you some images. So this is brain sections from mice. Um, the samples were kindly provided by Maren Engelhardt from Mannheim. Stained is better for spectrum, and what you see is the exon initial segment. And now if you turn on STAT, you actually see that it has a really nicely shaped regular pattern of the beta-4 spectrum. These are bacteria. They were acquired by um, Professor Silja Wessler from Salzburg. And also here, if you turn on STAT, you nicely see basically every protein complex on the surface of the bacteria, which were not seen by Confocal before. So now, we would like to show you a video on how to actually acquire a stat image in the Steticon. So if you want to image in the Steticon, you go to the welcome screen, click on start new session, and then you are asked by the Steticon to define your session. So you can put in your session name, all your files will be saved under today's date in the session name in a folder, put a sample name that will be how your images will be saved, sample 1, um, and then here it's called neurons, because we have a neuron sample. And then you can choose your dye settings, so in this case we have a barrier star red and the Alexa 594. It is adocene and spectrum labeled, you can set this as a display name, um, that's how it will be displayed in the software. Now you can set your color maps, also in the overlay, and then, if everything is set as you like it, you just click on Let's Go. This is how the Steadicon software looks like. So on the left, you have all the standard settings um, to set the stat and confocal. And on the right, there's all the advanced parameters, like Z-stacks, for example. First, we usually acquire an overview image. And if you click on the loop, it will acquire overview images continuously. This can be used to find focus, which you can do by turning the mouse wheel. And here you already see really nice neuron structure. Now I change the excitation laser power to make it a bit brighter 
for day one and now also for day two to get optimal settings first in Confocal and then we can do the optimization for step. So that's how it looks in the overlay and the single channels. Then if you're happy with your focal plane, you just draw a rectangle and into this position it will zoom in. So now it's zoomed in there and now you have the freedom to choose your stat parameters. So first the excitation power. For the excitation power I always recommend to first choose your confocal excitation laser power and if you're happy with this, you choose the stat laser power accordingly, which means that you increase the stat laser, uh, the excitation laser power for the stat, because stat images are usually much darker than the confocal images, because you get fluorescence from a much smaller point. Then you choose your resolution, which is a measure of the stat laser power. So if you decrease the stat laser power, you get less resolution. If you increase the stat laser power, you get much better resolution. And finally, the acquisition speed. So now I quickly turn off stat again to see in confocal if I'm in the right focal plane because it's a really thin sample so if you're out of focus we don't see the structure so nicely. Click on stat and go on acquire and this will now directly acquire your stat image. So that's all it takes. So you have you can choose three settings, excitation, laser power, resolution, which is the stat laser power, plus it automatically then also sets your pixel size and the acquisition speed. And now here you really nicely see these regular pattern structures for the adesine and the spectrin, which are at a spacing of I think 190 nanometers, which you could not see in the confocal image. Okay, so now Janina nicely acquired this uh, neuron image, this dual color neuro image, but it's still an indication of what your object actually is. So when you do any kind of microscopic imaging, the image that is formed, it's actually a process which is called a convolution of the point spit function of the system and noise is intrinsically added to the, uh, to, to the image. So the actual object is unknown in this case and this is illustrated here on this slide um, so we have a point spit function that optically distorts your object we have noise that is being added in the image formation process and we have the acquired image now with deconvolution the goal is actually to restore the object as best as possible with the a priori knowledge of the point spit function of your system so how the object is being deformed by the optics in your system and by the a priori knowledge of the noise and the acquired image. So we can use this mathematically with certain algorithms um, to get a best estimate of the object as possible. And this process is basically called deconvolution. So I would like to also go through you um, to work with you through a workflow to acquire the perfect image and if you would think about the perfect super resolution image you could think of a few points that are listed here perhaps there's more to be added to this one but these are the ones that I could come up with um, so a perfect super resolution image should have a high signal to noise ratio practically be noise free ideally uh, it should resolve very small structures so below 30 nanometers it should be fast to acquire so that it doesn't take too much experimental time but also to avoid any bleaching for example or cell damage and it should be quantifiable so the image below here what you see is a dual uh, color confocal image where uh, which is a z-stack MIP projection showing nuclear pore complex proteins which are shown in hot red uh, color, scale, uh, color scale and peroxisomes shown, shown in cyan colors when you would image this with STAT and enable it with Huygens deconvolution, you will get much better um, results, much crisper results. And you can distinguish these small features much more clearly. So it comes rather close to these perfect super resolution image uh, points that I mentioned here. When you do any kind of fluorescent imaging, and especially any scanning, uh, confocal or STAT imaging, 
you will always have a trade-off between three imaging aspects. That is resolution, temporal resolution, so the, the, the image acquisition speed, and the signal-to-noise ratio, or the contrast. So consider now that you're imaging at some point in this imaging triangle. So you can visualize this trade-off as a triangle, and you're always imaging somewhere on this triangle. So consider that we're now at this point at a certain resolution trade-off between temporal resolution resolution and signal to noise ratio so we're at these different points on the various axes of this trade-off but when we take into deconvolution into account we can actually improve the trade-off that we can make between these three imaging factors so we can actually stretch this imaging triangle and make it larger along each of the axes so when we now consider the, sim the same acquisition settings, we're actually at a different point on this new stretched uh, imaging triangle. And when we now look at the different axes, we see that we can improve the separation uh, of the small features and that we also get increased contrast. So this is highlighted with this image over here in the left, which is the raw stat data. But when we deconvolve this image, we get a much more improved contrast and we have an improved feature separation which is clearly visible here at these small features of this rootland protein structure. So why would you want to use Huygens with for example the Staticon? Well for one Huygens conserves signal. Um, you can do any automatic or manual deconvolution so it's fully automated or uh, you have full control on all the deconvolution settings. In Huygens there are advanced maximum likelihood algorithms available and in the end it helps you to improve your image acquisition speed as well because now you can work with noisier images because you have a powerful deconvolution algorithm that can restore the objects in your image. In Huygens there's also an automatic drift correction, so an object stabilizer algorithm and a spherical aberration correction that helps with the correction if you image uh, Z stacks deep in, deeper in your sample. So this is an example of uh, a GataQuant 140 ROR nano rulers. So when you compare the stat raw data with the deconvolved, you can appreciate how much the contrast is increased and that you can separate the small features much more clearly after deconvolution. And with GPU acceleration, the deconvolution is nearly instant. So, yeah, we would highly recommend it to really use it in your workflow to also optimize your imaging. So I would also like to tell you something about the point spread function of the system and that you can actually measure the point spread function yourself as well. But before doing so, I would like to introduce you to the process of what is called PSF distilling. Um, and the issue is typically that for PSF measurements you need a small point source that is smaller than the diffraction limit of your microscope. So for stat imaging this typically means that you need a bead that is smaller than 40 nanometers uh, which are typically very dim and ideally they should even be 20 nanometers. And the problem usually with these fluorescent beads that are so small is that they will be very noisy. So you will also need to average them and collect multiple bead images in order to, to get a good estimate of the point spread function. In addition, there's also a problem that your image that you acquire from beads, it's not an actual point spread function, but it's an image of the bead. So in case of these uh, PSF measurements, what you have as knowledge is your object. So you have your object shape, which is a spherical particle with a specific size. You have your measured image of the beads. And the thing you try to figure out is the PSF in this case. So you could think of it as an inverse deconvolution problem. With deconvolution, you try to figure out the object. But with PSF distilling, you try to figure out the PSF that was able to form this image with the knowledge of the object. So in Huygens we have a very efficient tool for this that's called the PSF distiller and the PSF distiller it can average uh, multiple images, multiple bead images, uh, it can average these beads and it distills uh, these PSF or the PSF from these bead images and it has a full width half maximum estimator built in and also a stat parameter estimator based on the distilled PSF. So we also did this with the, the Steadicon and we measured the PSF 
using GataQuant uh, Gata beads, which are 23 nanometer cubes, basically of folded uh, DNA that are packed with fluorophores, and they're very nice for stat PSF uh, measurement. So just to illustrate uh, what we've done here is that, yeah, we measured the points per function at the different stat powers for the Staticon, and we also fitted this with the Huygens theoretical PSF. And as you can see in this graph, that the Huygens theoretical, fit, uh, theoretical PSF fits very nicely with the saturation curve that we actually measured. So here's also images shown of these GATA beads with a saturation factor of zero. So you're basically imaging it in confocal mode with a saturation factor of 10. And since it's an inverse square root function, you go down very quickly in the beginning, but it, it levels off later on. Um, so this way we were able to really get the best estimate of our theoretical PSF as possible and try to match it as well as possible with the actual physical point spread function of the Steadicon system. So now I'm getting to the theoretical PSF in Huygens and uh, with the Steadicon system we can actually read in practically all of the metadata uh, that is required to calculate a accurate theoretical PSF for the Steadicon. And so, as I mentioned, as one example is the saturation factor that we assessed with these PSF measurements. Uh, the stat wavelength, which is a given fact, because in uh, Steadicon, for example, uh, it is fixed to 775. And the stat immunity fraction and the stat 3D percentage. I will go through these one by one in the next slides. So the stat saturation factor is what I showed as well in, uh, in the previous slide. It's the... Uh, the factor that is in this square root function, basically, so it determines how small your point spread function will be as a function of the saturation factor. And the saturation factor, in turn, is scales directly with the stat intensity. So this measure is put into the metadata of the Steadicon OBF files, and Huygens reads this in automatically, and as shown with the PSF assessment, we actually calibrated this value as well. The stat immunity fraction is the fraction of fluorophores that is still able to fluoresce. Even though the depletion donut is in this region, there's often a very small fraction of fluorophores that, are, that is able to fluoresce. So you will basically get a small confocal-like cloud surrounding the sharp stat point spread function. And for deconvolution, this can have a, a, an effect uh, that you take this into account or not. So typically this value is between 3 and 10 percent uh, and for the Steadicon system uh, for most uh, values, uh, for most dyes it's actually around 3 percent but in the end it also depends on your gating setting because the higher your gating the lower the immunity fraction will be. The last uh, stat parameter is the stat 3D fraction or in Huygens it's called the 3x uh, percentage. And this is the percentage of the power of the stat that you put into the actual direction. So how much depletion you get in the actual direction. So this is relevant, for example, for the uh, barrier expert line that can also do depletion in the actual direction or other systems that have uh, depletion in the actual direction. I would also like to highlight uh, that in case of Confocal, both confocal and stat imaging, there's often some small thermal drift present, but uh, this is in a very small order, so in order of 10 nanometers per slice uh, when you image a Z stack. And for conf confocal imaging, this is often neglectable because it's way below the uh, diffraction limit, so you won't really notice it that quickly. Only with significant drifts, you will see it or notice it, but otherwise, it's neglectable. And for stats, because you have such high resolution, your point spread function is so very sharp and small, um, you, it must be corrected for optimal deconvolution results. So even though this drift is in the order of 10 nanometers per slice, you would still need to correct for it to get to the best, uh, up, best deconvolution result as possible. So in Huygens we have automatic stabilization in the deconvolution wizard and in the batch processor and in the deconvolution express but you can always open any image in Huygens uh, in the Huygens stabilizer as well and run through the stabilization uh, manually so there's a specific stat thermal drift correction which uh, accounts for noise uh, properly because the stat images are typically noisier than uh, for example wide field or spinning disk images 
Um, so there's a specialized mode that deals better with uh, yeah, very uh, extreme noisy cases as well. So this is an example of a two-channel data set. It's a Z-Stack MIP rendering and the the peroxisomes here that you see in uh, magenta, they're all smeared out in one direction due to the thermal drift. But after the drift correction, you, you can see that th this is still raw data. The only thing that has been done is the, the drift correction, but that you can already see the hollow structures of the peroxisomes after the stabilization. And this is even before deconvolution. So in Huygens, uh, we do have fully automated deconvolution, for example, in the Deconvolution Express, but we also offer the choice to do uh, full manual deconvolution, for example, in the Deconvolution Wizard, where you have full manual control on all the deconvolution settings, such as max uh, the maximum number of iterations, the signal-to-noise ratio, what algorithm uh, to use. Um, and in addition, we also have a new feature that came out last year. It's a deconvolution preview option. So you can see in a small region of interest in your image what the effect of the various parameters are on the deconvolution of this uh, region of interest. So often people ask us if deconvolution is still quantifiable after, uh, yeah, after the deconvolution process. So if your images are still quantifiable. Well, we also did a study on this using the Argolite um, HM slides and with the intensity gradient pattern. So these are basically patterns that uh, are increasing and decreasing in intensity. And this research was done in collaboration with uh, the Free University uh, in Amsterdam, where they kindly helped us to, to record these kind of images. And we inspected the intensity of the raw data of these patterns uh, one by one in the, in the volume. So this is a C-stack, what you see here. And deconvolved it and compare it in one plot, the intensity in this volume of the deconvolved data set with the raw intensity data set. And with the Huygens deconvolution, as you would expect, uh, you will get a linear line with a unity slope and uh, this also shows that the deconvolution in this uh, it preserves all the intensity flux in this volume of these patterns and we also compared it with another product another deconvolution product which is shown here in gray where you can see that at the lower intensity patterns actually intensity is being removed whereas at the higher intensity patterns it seems to behave non-linear so the slope is actually higher than one here um, so there's obviously no clear linear behavior in that package. And uh, yeah, with Huygens, we do everything possible to, to conserve the intensity, so both on the PSF, so it's fully normalized that uh, you don't gain or lose any intensity due to the deconvolution process in the PSF. And uh, yeah, the maximum likelihood estimations are also implemented in such a way that the intensity is fully preserved. So regarding stat deconvolution, we now support various systems. So for the barrier instruments, we support the Steadicon compact line and uh, the OBF file format is now supported with the latest version as well. So all this metadata that I went through is now included. Um, we read all these parameters automatically from Smart Control 4.0 and up. And yeah, we measured the PSF with Gata, uh, Gata Quant beads uh, to make the theoretical PSF in Huygens uh, should, uh, fit as best as possible with the Steadicon system. We now also have an efficient connection, which we will highlight in a few minutes and uh, demonstrate how this works. The barrier instrument export line is also supported, so that's the MSR file format output. Um, the Leica stat systems are supported in the LIV file format, and if you have any other stat system, then uh, we also support any kind of TIFF file format. So to close off, uh, we in Huygens we uh, now have a full scale of super resolution solutions. So we had the Confocal plus Huygens deconvolution, which runs up to one, around 140 nanometers. Last year we also introduced a specialized option for uh, the rescan Confocal, developed by Confocal.nl. And last year we also added the array detector, so which is developed specifically for array scan uh, deconvolution, uh, reaching up to 100 nanometer resolution. 
and if you want to go below 100 nanometer uh, all the way up to 30 nanometer then STAT is a very obvious choice for that resolution range so we support these various STAT systems and I would also like to announce that we will introduce soon the Huygens localizer which is developed for um, analyzing and reconstructing storm and palm data Okay, so for the final part of this webinar, we would like to go back to the Steadicon software uh, so that we can highlight the new uh, and efficient image exchange to Huygens so that you can actually incorporate Huygens deconvolution in your imaging workflow. So I'll give the floor back uh, to Janina to explain how this goes in practice. So now we're getting back to the Steadicon software. What we can do is we could just go back to the overview which stays on the right. We can choose a new region of interest, like for example I would like to image this neuron. I can rotate my region of interest and make it really nicely fit to follow the neuron structure. Now I check the focal plane again to see that we are nicely in focus. You already know how to do that now. <laughs> Then we go back to STAT, click on Acquire, and now we'll acquire an image of this neuron in STAT microscopy. First, it now acquires a STAT image, and since we've also clicked into the Confocal tab here on the left, um, it will afterwards directly acquire a Confocal image for comparison. And now we can go to the Image Analysis part, and there you have several options. For example, you can draw a line profile. So if you click in line profile, draw a line profile, you see a line profile of these two structures and actually see these really nicely shaped regular pattern and that the green and the magenta are actually interleaved. Our alternative, you send this image to Huygens. Just click and this will later be then automatically opened in Huygens with the correct parameters set for this image. Now I restart it and um, made the acquisition speed faster. Now, of course, you get less signal, but by deconvolution, you can basically compensate for it. And this is what Remco will show you in a second. Right, so Janina just sent over uh, two images to Huygens. So Basically, these two image sets consist of one uh, stat and confocal part each, and each of these images is also a dual channel image. So let's select uh, the second image that Janina sent over, which was the, the image that was acquired with faster acquisition speed. So we can have a look at the microscopic parameters. So I already explained during the webinar that these parameters are automatically read in from the OBF Steadicon file format, so they're already optimally set. So there's nothing to do here. You can immediately deconvolve this image. So if you want to do a very quick deconvolution run, you can right click and go to Deconvolution Express. And the Deconvolution Express is actually fully aut automized. So let me set this to global color so that we use the same color scheme here. Uh, it is a fully automized deconvolution tool that does automatic background estimation, automatic uh, signal-to-noise ratio estimation, and it will also determine the deconvolution parameters that are optimal for this type of mic microscope, for this type of image, and for, with this amount of noise. So there's nothing to do here. You can actually click on Deconvolution Express, and it will do a very quick deconvolution run on this image. So it will handle both channels um, one by one and as you can see in this image it's almost immediately done. We can inspect the results afterwards in the twin slicer which is a very convenient tool to compare two images side by side. So we have the raw data set and the deconvolved data set automatically opened when we click on deconvolution or, or on the twin slicer. Let's have a look at this green channel for example and draw an intensity profile and you can immediately appreciate the contrast increase that is gained by the deconvolution. So this will help you significantly with your image analysis since the noise is not a hindrance anymore. If you want, you, in the twin slicer you can also compare it with the respective confocal image. So let me put this one back in center. 
highlighted. So in the confocal image, everything is basically blurred out into one large structure, whereas with uh, the stat super resolution with deconvolution, you can nicely resolve all the small features in the image. If you want to have more manual control on the deconvolution, you can also use the deconvolution wizard, which is a wizard that guides the user through the whole deconvolution process, and there you will have full manual control on all the deconvolution settings. Okay, so to summarize this part of the image exchange from Steadicon to Huygens, so Janina nicely showed how you can use the Steadicon sof software to officially set your optimal acquisition settings, so using the efficient sliders which already determine everything as optimally as possible. After acquisition you can send the image to Huygens where it will be opened automatically and the metadata will be read in. Um, afterwards you can deconvolve the image with either the fully automated deconvolution express or wizard and view the result in a twin slicer and if you're happy you can save the deconvolved data to disk as HDF5 or ICS which is the recommended file format uh, which also stores these microscopic parameter of the metadata. In case you want to improve your imaging further so maybe you want to change the, the speed or change the excitation power then you can just redo your imaging and repeat this process until you get the most optimal imaging. So this way you can really include Huygens in your image acquisition workflow to create the most optimal and perfect stat image. So as a last example I would like to close with this, uh, this last example um, and this is the confocal image and the nice stat plus Huygens deconvolution result and I hope you can appreciate this nice result and this improved workflow that we now implement by this nice collaboration with a barrier instrument. So we would like to thank you very much for joining this webinar. Uh, if you would like to get a Steadicon plus Huygens demo, then you can contact the barrier instruments. Uh, if you want to just have a go at Huygens, then you can download it for free and you can request a free test license. So uh, please feel free to do so. If you have any questions, then I would highly recommend to, to put them in the question box uh, with the, next to this webinar. We will get back to you by email as soon as possible on these questions. So it should be within 24 hours, but uh, 48 hours at the latest that we will get back to you with an answer to all your questions. So thank you very much again for joining. And uh, Janina, I would like to thank you very much for, for, uh, for being here and doing this, organizing this webinar together with, uh, with us. Thanks a lot, Remco, and yeah, thanks a lot for listening and watching, and I hope we'll see each other with you testing the Steadicon plus Huygens. Yeah. Bye-bye.